What's up, everybody? It's Dr. Daniel Choi here from North Texas Dental Surgery, Wisdom Teeth, and Denture Implant Center. And I told this patient, uh, actually this person on YouTube, who asked me a question about bone grafting because he was seeing such a wide variation of cost. Um, he left a comment on my video about if you need bone grafting. And so he had multiple consultations and multiple quotes and different treatment plans and he wanted my best advice on this. So I told him I'd answer a question for him in a video. So I'm about to do that right now. All right. So let's look at this video, I mean this comment real quick. Um, this again was my, do I need bone grafting for my dental implant? Um, long story short, I have an issue with tooth number three. It has a root canal crown apicoectomy, now a cavity under the crown. I choose to remove the tooth and replace it with an implant from Mexico. I visit there regularly and I have already had one successful implant there. I did the extraction and bone graft at a general dentist in the States without membrane last time. All right, so this time, goes to three different oral surgeons in the last two weeks, um, got two different quotes, he has no dental insurance, which is why I'm seeing right here that the cost is so expensive, all right? So number one, you wanna get dental insurance because if you don't have dental insurance, a lot of these guys are gonna charge you whatever the heck they want, okay? So what I'm seeing right here, extraction, option number one, extraction, um, optional autologous blood, which is a PRF, PRP, um, and then bone graft, $615. So that's basically the total cost, 940 or 1415, because this was optional for the autologous blood. Um, option number two, extraction, uh, membrane and bone graft. Uh, number three, extraction um, with no bone graft at the time he thinks that the bone will fill in. All right, so he's saying he's confused, uh, wasn't offered membrane or blood platelets last time he did extraction. And, and the graph price was much lower. I was leaning toward option number one, 940, because I really trusted her, um, which was the using of the PRF. Number two, I did not like that option. Interesting though, they were the only ones to mention the membrane. Okay, so I'll talk about that too. Number three, then option number three sold me because of the price and the conservative approach. Um, he's been practicing for a long time. And so what are my thoughts? All right, so. Right off the bat, um, you know, when research has always shown that when you do an extraction and a bone graft that you're gonna have more bone for your dental implant, right? So if it's my mouth, I'm gonna do a bone graft and membrane, okay? Now, I'll tell you exactly why I think like that. Now, um, kind of jumps to question uh, number three. The patient was like, well, you don't need a bone graft at all. And the guy's got a lot of experience. Now, could we technically get away with a dental implant with no bone grafting at all? Yes, you possibly could, but we're not 100% sure. If you like to have a clear prognosis and a lot of predictability, that's why you would do a bone graft. Have I placed dental implants on patients that haven't had bone grafts before? Absolutely, I've placed about 10,000 implants in my career. Um, have I seen patients that I have not done a bone graft on that didn't have a good result, um, like you know, not enough bone? Absolutely. Um, would I have gotten more predictability and more bone had I done a bone graft? Absolutely. Um, why did we not do a bone graft? Finances, right? They didn't want to do it. So I always tell my patients, listen, you got the option to do a bone graft or not. I prefer that you would do a bone graft. And it's not all, you know, people are like, like, oh, you want to make more money from the procedure. Well, absolutely, we do make more money from the procedure. But because we make more money doesn't mean that, you know, that doing that bone graft wasn't the right thing for you. Now, what kind of like trips me up about this case though is that when I hear that basically that there was a extraction due to a failed root canal which then had an apicoectomy which I believe they're far outdated so I don't even know why they did that in the first place and it's probably up near the sinus so doing an apico up there you might be causing more problems than good but then now there's also a cavity now this tooth sounds like it's a disaster right and so if it's a disastrous tooth because it has an old endo infection and also because the crown is basically rotting out underneath, removing that tooth may be more difficult. If we're extracting a tooth that's more difficult, then there's gonna be more bone destruction. So that guy that's who's saying in option number three, you don't need to do bone graft. And how close are we to the sinus? Again, I don't have these x-rays to prove anything, but all I'm saying is that there's probably gonna be more bone destruction. So the guy that's option number three, that's saying that you don't need to do any sort of bone grafting, I would say, like, ba like based off of not even seeing the x-rays, that's probably the worst advice that he can give you, okay? So I really do think that you could benefit from your first uh, two referrals, right? So the guy, the lady that said uh, the bone graft with the PRF, the blood platelets, and then option number two, um, the guy that said doing bone graft and membrane. Now, 
which option would I do? Now, what PRF basically is, is they're taking your blood, drawing it out, and they're enriching, they're getting down to the platelets. They're, it's like this gooey like substance that goes over your bone graft. And then they, they don't use a membrane because all oh, you don't need to use a membrane. Um, in all honesty, I find it to be the least in regards of holding the bone, the bone graft in. So let's take a step back. Whenever we're doing a bone graft, they're like large particles of sand. Okay, so we take the tooth out, we clean out the socket, and we place the large particles of sand, well, I mean, bone in there that looks like sand. We need something to hold it in. And so that's typically why we used membrane on top of that, right? So we would use a little piece of like non-dissolvable or a dissolvable membrane. Collagen membrane is a dissolvable membrane. Um, they have Teflon membranes um, that are non-dissolvable, okay? Now, the whole purpose of using membranes in the beginning was well, we need to keep the bone in there and you'll have gravity working against you, right? I mean, I've seen some people who just do bone grafting and put a dissolvable stitch over it without a membrane. And then I've seen these patients like come to me like two weeks, four weeks later, and I'm like, what bone what, what, what bone graft? Um, I, I don't see anything in here. All, all your bone graft is like, I guess it like fell out of your mouth. Um, and basically you look at the x-rays, there's this big black concavity in there. So you paid hundreds of dollars for nothing, you know? So number one, you need a membrane in there to kind of hold that bone in place. Number two, the whole purpose of the membrane too, is that basically your gums grow 10 times faster than your bone. When we place the bone particles in there, we want to put a barrier to keep the epithelium, the gums from infiltrating into that space. So the whole purpose of the, bone, the membrane is going to be it's going to hold the bone in place and not have it all fall out. Number two, with a good job of suturing with a non-dissolvable stitch, like the Teflon suture, polypropylene suture, not a gut suture. Do not have a surgeon use a gut suture. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to really make sure that that gum isn't going to infiltrate in that space and disturb all that beautiful bone grafting that your surgeon did. Okay. So the other option that they discovered a few years back is that, hey, let's use PRF. It's going to have help with your soft tissue healing, which it does. But, you know, that's at more expense. I really think that it does a worse job of really holding your bone membrane, your bone particles inside your socket. So that's really why in my practice, every time I do an extraction socket preservation, I like using membrane. I like to really, like, it really holds that bone in. Now let's go back to that question again. So, you know, to sum it up, I said, I like option number two the best. I think option number three was definitely the worst because in a case like, I mean, it's, it's one thing to have one tooth that needs to come out because there's a small fracture in it and there's no infection. But with your history of a previous root canal and a crown apicoectomy and now a frac like basically a cavity, a big cavity underneath the crown, that that's just, that that's not, that's not an easy extraction. I, I've done probably a hundred thousand extractions in my career. Um, so that's probably the worst advice. So it's between one and two. Um, now the other thing is whoever this guy is, he's gouging you. All right. 2037 for an extraction. And whoo, I mean, I'm not seeing that case, but I mean, you can definitely get like, <laughs> you, you could probably go out like to another, like, you know, periodontist, like oral surgeon and get a referral for extraction socket preservation, you know, with the bone of the membrane. And, um, you can, cut that price in half at least. Um, and this, again, I don't like the the fact of using PRF. You know, it does help with soft tissue healing. I just see more voids in the bone graft. Um, you know, that price 940 would be better. So, you know, that's hopefully um, this information was helpful. Um, that's what I've seen clinically. You know, I do highly recommend a bone graft in this case. But, you know, again, I don't think, like, I mean, there are certain cases that you are okay without a bone graft. Again most likely posterior teeth, most likely lower teeth. Um, there are certain cases where you don't need a bone graft. And, you know, I'll make another video about it some other time, but some people do better after a extraction um, if they have thicker bone and gums. You know, everyone has like a, what they call a different biotype, thicker bone and gums, thinner bone and gums. If you have thinner bone and gums and, you know, you extract a tooth, your bone's gonna thin out way worse and you will definitely need a bone graft at the time of the implant, so. Hopefully this information was helpful for you guys. And if it was, please give me a thumbs up and a follow on my channel. Thank you so much.